the paper. <laughs> I present it. And I'm one of the people that completely corrupted by PowerPoint. I ended up with like 50 slides, jumped right to the info, so I'll probably have to skip a large chunk of them at the end, just to have time for a meaningful discussion. Uh, the title of the paper suggests that it's going to be a lot about reinforcement learning agents. Uh, many examples will be on that type of uh, architecture, but I intend the paper to be more general about uh, wiretapping and intelligent machines and other ways uh, utility function can be corrupted uh, in such machines. So just to give you a brief outline, I'll introduce the topic of wireheading and give some basic examples, historical examples, animals, humans, uh, some basic AIs. Then, uh, in a way, the paper is a survey of existing published and unpublished literature on the topic, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll give you some intro to the field. Uh, I don't have citations in the presentation, it would be too distracting. <coughs> the paper itself has all the required citations. If you're interested in a specific slide, get the paper, you can read all the additional info on it. I just realized that my presenter view does not match your, your view. Let's see if we can adjust that. Aha, uh -huh. makes more sense. So again, I'll start with introduction, uh, go over some proposed solutions to the problem of wireheading, uh, mention briefly some shortcomings I see in those solutions, and finally talk about some of the uh, methods I'm interested in proposing for. So uh, to start with, uh, wireheading initially was studied in uh, animals, in rats specifically. It's a way to implant electrodes into a brain of a animal, specifically the pleasure center of an animal, and uh, in this particular set of experiments they allowed the animal to stimulate its own brain pleasure centers. The interesting observation was that animals chose to do nothing but stimulate their pleasure centers. They give up food, they give up water, they give up sex, just to be able to press that button. So I guess the big picture question I'm trying to address is, will machines capable of modifying their own uh, reward functions, their own intelligence modules, be also subject to this type of obsessive behavior. Uh, however, I'm not limiting my definition of what can be counted as a corruption of utility function just to wireheading. Amahandra has a great paper describing different ways human beings cheat with uh, utility computations. There's lots of ways we can produce counterfeit utility. Uh, I guess many of you are students here. So you, you know about how to go for a better grade, not for the greatest amount of knowledge. Counterfeit currency is another example. I'm not going to go the, over details of non-reproductive sex inside but uh, I'm sure you all know what uh, I'm referring to. I was trying to find a number of examples of wireheading in machines, and that turned out to be much more challenging than I expected. There are some examples, but uh, they're not widely known. Um, Yudkovsky cites an example where a machine learned to associate specific types of rules with others to increase value of those rules. The example I personally like the most is the one where a machine learned to essentially commit suicide. It uh, figured that if it's programmed not to make any mistake in its reasoning, the best way to accomplish that is to completely stop functioning. So, uh, it's an interesting parallel with uh, human suicide and throughout the presentation I'm not going to mention it explicitly, but try to draw parallels between behaviors I'm describing in machines and specific uh, mental problems we encounter in humans. So what I'm going to do next is quickly go over examples of potential wireheading in superintelligent machines. We don't have any yet, so those are sort of what can happen if we get them type of examples. So the trivial one is the direct simulation. This is essentially the same experiment with the rat, only this time the machine can directly push its own reward button, push it in a software sense, uh, call the function, administering that type of reward. Another example problem is a situation where you have a machine trying to optimize its reward. Obviously, it's represented as some numerical value in the system. What happens when the system tries to modify that volume to a point where it needs additional resources to produce larger and larger numbers, potentially taking over all the other available computational resources to accomplish this type of goal? 
Another more science fiction type of scenario is just direct protection of the uh, reward channel. If it is humans who are responsible for administering the reward and humans who are capable of cutting off additional rewards, is it possible that the machines will attempt to secure the channel by uh, cancelling that problem in a way? <coughs> there is also some uh, work on how other components of a system can be manipulated to indirectly affect the reward or utility function. There is a few papers on ontological crisis, basically the representation of the world in the system and how updates, uh, purposeful or uh, malicious updates to the ontology of the system can have effects on the, on the utility function of the agent. <coughs> there are other things which are uh, debatable about how likely they are to happen. The machine can essentially change the type of uh, assignment it has to easier assignments, provide uh, more reward for those things which are easier to accomplish. There is also possibility of uh, machines discovering simple behaviors which result in uh, consistent reward administration, leading to an infinite loop of repetition of behavior. As I said, some of those behaviors we see in, in human beings uh, with certain uh, mental challenges. It's also possible that uh, if uh, machines have sufficient access to, to the human controlling it, it might discover that instead of trying to fulfill whatever uh, directions it gets from the human, it might actually modify the human, which might be easier to get the same rewards because now the human wants something already accomplished in the world. Without doing any work, it would be getting same, same, top, same type of uh, reward. There is also questions of uh, actual values associated with different behaviors. So if a system has access to its own uh, reward mechanism, it can manipulate values, essentially creating inflation or hyperinflation of rewards, uh, in the process possibly changing desirable behaviors, uh, because uh, things which were low reward previously might be become high reward and as a result, change the actual behavior of the system. I started talking about other components of a system which could be modified in addition to the actual reward channel. Um, ontology is one, but really any component in the system, its memory, its sensors, could be altered to produce a different types of uh, different type of uh, um, representation of the world, essentially allowing the system to uh, trick the reward channel into administering awards. Uh, we humans are very much into this type of uh, sensory delusion. We like reading books, we like looking at pictures which might represent certain actions which are not actually happening at the time. Uh, so how do we also make sure that the world based on which the system is uh, operating is real, not not made up by the system itself. So that was a super fast overview of different types of problems people mentioned. Now I'll give you a similar type of overview for potential solutions. Um, I tried to list as many as I could find. Not all of them are necessarily equally good, equally valuable. Uh, but uh, I was trying to get a complete picture. Again, this is in a way of survey survey paper. So one suggestion uh, frequently cited is making the reward function inaccessible and that's actually the solution which was used uh, by the UISCO developers. They separated that module from the rest of the system making it impossible for system to self-modify that aspect of the program. Uh, it might work for some some systems but it limits the capability of a system. If a system cannot fully improve its code in all aspects of it, that there are limits, upper limits, on how great it, it could get at doing anything else we want to do. A similar idea, but more of a temporary solution, is resetting <coughs> of the uh, reward function. Essentially, if a system makes modifications, we can have a function which periodically resets it to the uh, whatever default setting was, and uh, given how frequently we might set this function to work, it might be somewhat useful, but it also would prevent the system from becoming better or accomplishing many things. 
There are some ideas and it's not really obvious how they would be implemented by simply making the system uh, not desired to perform those type of modifications to really be uh, against uh, any 